Hey everyone, this week you are going to get the chance to explore this chroma key or green screen effect on your own as you go about making some short videos using that special effect. So uh, it's going to be up to you as to what you decide to pair together. You might take an approach where you drop yourself into a new location. You might use the green screen or chroma key effect to see through something. Um, it's a really versatile tool, and it can be used for a lot of different reasons, as we've seen through the different artists and examples that I showed you. Um, but there's a couple really simple ways that we might get started doing this, uh, and some more advanced ways that you might use, too, in case you have a special idea that needs a little more control. So let's go ahead and first start talking about what the maybe easiest way to get started with this is. Um, and that would be to use iMovie, either on your desktop if you're using an Apple computer or on the mobile app. You can do a lot of this just from your phone. Um, I find it really convenient because I can shoot on my phone. Uh, I can bring it into iMovie on the mobile app, which is free. And uh, just with a couple clicks of the button, I can get a, a really quick and easy effect to kind of work out uh, without having to share files across different um, computers and things like that. So once you open iMovie on your phone or on your tablet device, you're going to see that you end up at this menu screen. And in order to create a new project, you just need to click the plus sign. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to open up a dialog box and you click movie. Um, and now we need to find initial footage that we're going to use to create our timeline out of. So I've already got it in a folder here. Um, I have kind of an open field scene that I want to be kind of the setting. So we're going to pick the image that we want revealed. If I click the check sign and then create movie, you will see that it has created a timeline of that footage. There's a couple things that you can do with this. Um, if you select it, you'll see that you can affect the speed, you can affect the volume, you can add text. Uh, elements, you can change kind of the, the color filter of that footage. Uh, I'm just going to leave it just as is. And obviously we can also trim it as well. Um, now I'm going to put in my green screen footage. What's going to sit on top of that, uh, but will reveal uh, the field behind me when I click the green screen effect. So instead of using the plus sign with this one, I'm going to click those three dots and we can see there's a number of different screen options. I'm going to click green and blue screen and there we go. We have it kind of set on top, and we can see that the effect works pretty well. Um, you can click those options to kind of drag the corners around if you have a special cropping that you need to do. And if you click the sliders, you can adjust the strength. So I'm going to find kind of a happy middle ground here uh, that works for me. And once that's kind of set in place, I might want to trim this up, actually. We can see that it works pretty well. Um, there's some kind of dead space, but I see here I kind of brought in um, an element there where I flip the lights on. And so that's where I'm going to start my scene. Really intuitive. You can just drag those sliders wherever they need to be. And I'm going to drag my underlying footage so that it matches that same kind of length. And there we go. And I might even bring the ends a little bit, too, just to bring it to about 30 seconds. So now we should be able to watch my footage, and when the lights flip on and I walk into the room, it's like I'm walking into my, my remote office out in the country, right? Um, so I used this, you know, obviously I used a big green screen piece of green fabric that I happen to have here at the art building. Um, if I want to save this, we just click out of our document, um, we go to that share button and save video, and that will, uh, once I pick my, my file size, it'll export your movie and save it to your camera roll. Um, it's really as simple as that. Um, you know, if you're using um, uh, iMovie, it's going to be really simple to do just kind of pairing of images like that. Um, the other way that we might do, let's just do one more example here, and I'm gonna show you kind of another example. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a movie, um, pick our video element, scroll down and find it. And this time I have, let me see what I have here. I've got like a, uh, footage of goldfish swimming around in a, an aquarium. So we'll use that for my background footage. We can see there it's about 14.7 seconds. Looks great to me. One thing I might actually do is play with the speed. Slow this down. Give us a little bit more time. So let's just play with the slider. Um, and it's, you know, barely noticeable, but it does give me a little bit more um, kind of control. I can create a longer scene out of this. Uh, that looks about right. Let's see. Yeah, that looks okay. Hardly know it's been slowed down, but I get a little extra length out of this. So now let's again click the plus sign. We'll find our other footage, the one that I want to green or blue screen out of. Now the thing about iMovie is that it looks for green or blue in your images, and it does it automatically. It won't work with other colors, but green and blue will both be subtracted from your image. And there we go. 
easy as that. I've got fish swimming around in my sky. I still will play with the strength a little bit, see kind of how that, um, uh, you know, changes the effect. Um, there it kind of, you know, we can see the fish kind of peeking through the clouds a little bit. Looks like a little rough edge on that tree line though, so actually maybe a lower strength will work well for this. Let's bring it way down. I think we might even be able to bring it, you know, further down than that. Um, but it looks pretty neat, right? I mean, this is just kind of a nice surreal scene. Um, yeah, let's bring that down just to touch and see. And that looks pretty good. Um, so again, uh, I'm pretty pleased with my results. Uh, this is a really simple pairing. Obviously, I was thinking about kind of um, what kind of images would, would go together in some interesting, fun, or novel way. Uh, and we can do the same thing. If you click out of your project and click that share button, um, we can go to save video and uh, pick 720p, the highest quality, and it will export that movie, put it on my camera roll, and there we go. Okay, so as I mentioned, iMovie is really good if you have just a simple effect that you want to do. You just want to pair two images. You don't need a lot of control over how you're going to get those two things to sit together. But let's say that you have a project that requires a little bit more control. In that case, I would highly recommend using Adobe Premiere, which is a professional level video editing software, and it comes bundled with a lot of really useful things that will make the chroma key process a little bit more easy. So once you've got Premiere open, all you need to do to begin is just create a new project. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm gonna call this Heart, and uh, we can just kind of uh, overwrite. I already had a project called that as I was testing it. Um, but once it's open, you can see that we have just a blank project template. Um, over here in the bottom left-hand corner, that's our project panel. Uh, that's where we need to bring any footage into Premiere that we want to use to edit together in our timeline. So again, we can't just open a file using the open command. We need to import video files into Premiere so that they can be used. So you can do that in a number of ways. Um, you can just drag and drop into this box. If you double click the box, it'll open up a dialog. If you right click, you'll see import pop up. Or if you go up to file, and find import that way, you can use that too. So once you've got your dialog box, I've got a couple things that I, I've already set up here. Um, this is an image or a piece of footage that I did. Um, I took a green piece of construction paper and cut it out into this kind of jagged shape and I just taped it to my chest. Um, I did this because I had found also this stock footage of like a beating heart. So what my idea is for this is that like I'm going to pair these two things together so that you can kind of see through my chest and see the heart beating underneath. So I can select both of them. I'll select my first one. And if I find the second one and hold command, then I can select both of them at the same time and then just go ahead and import. Okay. So now they've both popped up into my project panel here and we can get started. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did working in Premiere last time. Right click and find new sequence from clip. Now what this has done, we can see here, it's brought my footage over here into a timeline where we can scrub back and forth. We can see um, you know, this kind of moving in real time. Um, and we can do a bunch of editing here by moving things around. Um, first thing I want to do is probably trim the boundaries of this clip. Uh, you know, I don't want to be leaning into the camera. I don't want to be, you know, uh, moving around as much. Uh, it's going to help sell the effect because I want to be standing as still as I can. So if I go over to the left side, you should see a red cursor pop up that has a little bracket and an arrow pointing to the right. This is our trim cursor. And if I just click and drag, we can see it gives me a preview and I can drag it to a point where it seems I am pretty much standing in place. So right about there looks pretty good. Um, now if I click and drag that back to the beginning of the timeline, it will begin at zero seconds and we're in good shape. So I still want to do the same thing to the other end, clicking and dragging with my red cursor so that I'm just kind of standing in place and yeah, about 20 seconds. That's a pretty good, pretty good duration. So I've got that trimmed. The other thing that I might want to fix about this um, that bothers me, I didn't get myself really centered in frame. It's not a very nice looking video, but I can make it look nice. If I go up to the upper left hand, um, we have our effect controls. If I've got my project or my clip inside my project highlighted, it should bring up your effect controls. If you're having a hard time finding that, you can always go up to window 
and go click, make sure your box is checked for effect controls, uh, and that will get you what you need to do. But as we can see that there's a number of different options that you can use here, um, things that affect the position, the scale, the opacity, the rotation. For this one, let's just start with the scale. If I click and drag up and down, we can see it affects the size of my footage. And so there we go, let's blow that up to about that big. And then on position, if I click and drag up and down, it will move me left to right with that uh, first set of numbers, that first parameter. And then up and down is the set on the right, um, where we can bring me down into the frame a little bit more. So that looks pretty good, right? Looks a little bit better. I might even bring my scale up a little bit more um, just to kind of sell the effect a touch more. Again, you're, you know, if you're, if you're scaling up footage, um, you're going to lose some resolution. But to me here, that doesn't look so bad. Okay, so that's all in place. Um, now all we need to do is get ready to bring our other footage in and use a key effect in order to reveal it underneath. So um, Adobe works very similar, or Premiere works very similarly to other Adobe softwares um, where you're dealing with layering things. And obviously the things that are layered on top will be most visible and they will hide things that are hidden on the layer below unless we apply some kind of matte or key effect. So what we want to do over here is in our timeline, we can see there's a V1, a V2, a V3. These are all of our video layers and A1 through A4 are all of our audio layers. So we want this footage to be on top because we want to use that key footage to reveal what is sitting underneath it, which will be our heart footage. So if I just click and drag this up to V2 and click and drag the audio down to A2, um, we've now made space where we can go back over into my project library and drag in the footage of that heart beating into V1 and A1. So now, as we can see, it's in my timeline, but we can't see it. If I was to hide the uh, V2 layer, we can see the hearts there. It's just hidden below this layer. Um, so now this is where that key effect comes in. Um, what we want to do, go up to the left or the right hand side rather here into the effects panel. Um, again, if you don't see that, you can go to window and make sure that the effects box is checked um, and it should show up. But in the search box, let's just go ahead and type in key, key K-E-Y. Um, and you can see that there's a number of keying effects that it already has suggested. So there's color key. If you wanted to select a color other than green or blue, that's a good one to use. Um, Luma key deals with value, lights and, bla lights and darks, blacks and whites. Um, but we're going to use this ultra key because it combines pretty much both of those things and it, it has a lot of parameters that are useful and, and will give us the best effect. So in order to apply this ultra key uh, effect to the footage that I want to use it on, all I need to do is click and drag it over into the timeline and on top of that clip that I want to use it. So in the, my case, that's the footage of me with the construction paper taped to my chest. So now we can see in the effects panel, in addition to position and scale and all those other things, we've also added uh, parameters to affect the ultra key. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and find the key color, grab the eyedropper, and just click the color that you want to select. So for me, it's somewhere around in here, this green color. And there we go. We see that my heart has now appeared behind my chest, but it looks a little funky. This is where these other menus kind of come into play. So if I spin down matte generation, uh, two of the things that I found useful here are to adjust the tolerance, which you can see um, relates to how sensitive to that green color our, uh, our effect is. Uh, but pedestal I found worked really well for this particular effect. Um, bringing the pedestal up made it a nice kind of black void behind it, it seemed. Um, so there's lots of other things you can play around with here. You can play around with the highlights. Um, you can play around with the shadows. If you spin down these other menus, there's other things like choke, which will kind of sharpen up my edges. Um, color correction, you can play with the saturation of things. Um, spill suppression will help, like if you have uh, reflective lights, it'll help kind of cut some of that green out of the background if you have a reflection going on. Um, but it's just basically playing around and seeing what kind of these parameters, trying to find a balance that sells the effect the best. But now we can see this here. Looks like we've got a beating heart there. 
and it looks pretty good. The other thing I might wanna do, just the same thing that I did with position and scale. If I click my heart beating um, uh, footage down here in the timeline, I can scale it up so that my heart gets bigger. I can change the position so that it's more evenly kind of placed in the center of that, that hole. And now, I, if I scroll back, should have a pretty decent kind of beating heart kind of footage here. Um, you know, it's not perfect. I'll probably still play with this a little bit more, uh, but in terms of like a, a simple kind of project, uh, I think it's pretty good. So let's say we're done. Another thing I might do just to clean this up is grab my razor tool over here on this left-hand side of our, our project timeline. And I can use that to cut my heartbeat into two sections just by clicking and holding right as it snaps to the end of my uh, initial footage. Um, now with my arrow um, direct selection tool, if I click this one, we can see it's split it into two. I can delete the part that I don't want just by hitting delete. And now we have a really nice concise piece here. If I bring my scrubber to the very end, another thing I want to do is go up here below your preview panel and find this right uh, bracket. That's gonna mark, these brackets mark our ins and outs. So that tells Premiere what the boundaries of your final video will be. So if I click the mark out here, all it's doing is telling Premiere, hey, at this point, at nine seconds and six, whatever, fractions of a second frames or whatever it is, um, that's where the video stops. So that's where it will stop rendering when we export, which is the next thing we're gonna do. So again, we want, we're done with this. We wanna share it out um, as a, a watchable video file. You could just go up to file. Um, we don't wanna use save or save as. What those two options do is that they, um, they create a Premiere project file. So it's useful to save if you are not done with a project and you wanna open this later in Premiere again and do some more tweaking or you know, adjust things a little bit more. Uh, save or save as creates that project file. Um, what we wanna use instead though is export and we're going to export media. That'll bring up a dialog box um, as I've recommended I would use H.264 for my format, which is just an MP4 file. Um, you can change your output name. I can call this, what should I call this, heartbeat. Um, you can see it's gonna save it as a video file, MP4. Let's just click save. And then what we wanna do is click export, not Q. Q will kind of save it for later. That's useful if you're trying to render or export out a whole bunch of videos and you wanna set it up for like when you're gonna be away from your computer. Um, since we're just dealing with one small video, export is what we wanna click. And we'll go ahead and just let it work its magic. And once it's done, you should have that video saved to your desktop or wherever you saved it as an MP4 um, that can be easily shared. So that's it. That's really all uh, you know that you need to know about working with Premiere for this effect, but obviously you can extend this in a lot of different ways based on what it is you want to create. So there you go. There's a really simple approach with iMovie and a more complex approach with Premiere. It's really up to you which one you choose to use for this project, and it entirely depends on what your idea is. Um, so my advice to you is think about the concept. Think about the images or the kind of effect that you want to create and work from there to understand how you're going to go about doing that. Obviously, if you have questions, you want to run something by me, you're always more than welcome to reach out by email or we could set up a time to meet online virtually to walk you through a special effect if you need some help. Um, but other than that, you're going to be kind of on your own and I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with with Chroma Key.